Hey everybody, welcome back to Readers the Right. I've had a lot of questions about Warhammer since those videos have done fantastic. And a lot of you guys have asked how you bridge the gap between books and the tabletop. Sometimes this is coming from the tabletop side and we have some videos that will show up in the banner above. And I definitely have recommendations for that. If you have, if you play a tabletop, there's a lot of different ways to get into the lore. Um, you could also go with lore tubers. Um, I have a few that I'd recommend as well. I will pop their names up, actually probably over here, that are fantastic to introduce to the lore. Uh, but there's also a lot of books. Uh, one that we just covered last week, Oris Rising is a great introduction to Space Marines, Space Marine factions, and where they came from. But I've also had a, a few questions the other way. The If I love the lore, how do I bridge the gap to tabletop? Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. I have zero problems with you just having a favorite faction from your stories and diving right in. I had a conversation with somebody at work today about the Necrons because of that exactly. Uh, he started collecting them because he thought they looked cool and wanted to learn more about them. Um, and started with the Infinite and Divine, and now he's building a, a Necron army. And that's great. If that's how you want to do it, that is fantastic. But if you've read some of the lore, you think it's cool, but you have no idea where to start, which was my boat, um, there's a few different ways to approach it. So I've broken this up into five categories to give you five armies that I would recommend that would make great starter armies for a specific reason. And here in a few weeks, I'm actually going to do one that is the opposite. The five armies you should not start with for basically this exact same reason. So I'm not going to start rank these in a one to five breakdown because a lot of these are good starter armies for vastly different reasons. Um, and I feel like giving them a ranking just wouldn't be fair. Um, so four of these five armies I actually currently own. So I will pop these images up here. The first one is one I do not own. So the model that I'm going to show here is not mine. I will try and credit the author or the painter and owner of it if I can find it. But the other four you'll see are mine, and I painted them. Well, I should say they're my playgroups. Um, I did all the painting for our playgroup, though, so they stay at my house and I painted them. So let's dive into this and talk about the five best starter armies and why you should start with them. Now, the first one is pretty obvious. Warhammer is not the cheapest hobby to get into. There are some armies that are wildly expensive. Um, and Honestly, the wildly expensive will be in the video here in a couple weeks of the five worst armies to start with. But on the spectrum of least expensive, there are several people who have done some great breakdowns on this and saved me a lot of work and research. Um, one of my favorites is Poor Hammer Podcast. Um, if I can, I will link or put a flag up there for them as well. I absolutely recommend them. They do a good mix of fun discussions while providing good information. Um, there's also Aspects Tactics, which is a much more Warhammer-focused almost news organization, well, news reporter. Uh, he does a fantastic job of providing this information as well. And from these two and a lot of other YouTubers, Reddit groups, Facebook groups, there's one army that's pretty much universally agreed is the least expensive for a good reason, and that is the Custodes. The Custodes are a big, beefy army, so you're going to have a lot less models on the table, and those models tend to actually cost less on average than most other models. Um, they're easier to transport, they're a lot more functional, they can be a little bit difficult to paint at times, um, and this is the army that I don't actually personally have, but it is a really cool army. Uh, it has some pretty cool lore behind it. And like I said, it is the least expensive to jump into. And right now it's actually becoming extremely popular because it's Henry Cavill's favorite army. 
Um, he likes it a lot for the lore reasons um, and that they are, when it comes to humans, the absolute elite specialist fighters. A while ago, I did actually own a custodi uh, custodian's army. Um, I never actually painted them, but they are fun to play. Uh, the play style didn't really fit me. Um, it's not the way I like to play. Um, I'm much more of a fast strike, I hit him and run. My second army is a much more heavy duty, take a beating and approach and then be the living crap out of them army. So I, I didn't really gel with them. I know one of my playgroup did, so we sold it, but they are fun. Uh, I know a lot of people who absolutely love playing custodies and they are usually pretty easy to source. They're really easy to find. Uh, there's not a huge variety of piece, of different units and characters, but that also means fielding them is pretty easy. Um, a couple command uh, combat patrols and a few other pieces, and you're pretty much there. Um, I'll let other people do a much more deep dive on how to build these armies. Uh, if you just search on YouTube how to build a custodian's army, there's at least three different videos that I'm aware of of them. Uh, two done by the two people I already met, mentioned before, uh, Mosfix Tactics and the Poor Hammer Podcast. Um, they, the Poor Hammer does a little bit more of an overview, while uh, Ospex actually does a much more deep dive into it. But let's move on to the next group. The next group is the best variety. If you want an army that's super diverse and has a lot of really cool things that you can do from a bunch of different angles, you need the poster boys of 40k, the Space Marines. Here's mine. Uh, this was my first army. So paint job's not as good as you'll see on some of these. Um, but they are very versatile. They're a lot of fun. Um, I personally play the White Scars. Um, they have different sub factions in the space marines themselves which all do different things which is one of the big reasons they are so popular and uh, they're also humans elite well humans main elite fighting force the custodians are a little bit more defensive while the space marines are our attack force uh, as human beings and they are super fun to play because you can play them pretty much any way you want to and that's why as a variety they are the ones everyone recommends. Typically, when people start Warhammer 40k, you either start with a Space Marines army or the other poster army of that edition. Um, when I started, it was Necrons. Um, so I actually do have a small unit of Necrons that I haven't painted yet, uh, mostly because it's just a single squad. Um, currently, it is the Tyranids which I do have because I picked up the Leviathan box and they are a recommendation later and so on and so forth. But Space Marines will always be a staple and they are a good starting point, especially now that we're moving into the Primaris era. Sticking, getting Primaris Space Marines is a good way to pretty much guarantee longevity. Um, you're not going to lose your units as quickly um, as some of the other factions will. Do not get firstborn space marines if at all possible. Those are going away. But there is a lot of really cool things you can do with space marines, a lot of variety. Uh, the one you'll actually see right here while I'm talking is uh, an assault terminator. Basically, a really, really beefy guy who charges in with a shield and hammer and beats the living daylights out of people. Um, but you have everything from ranged in stealth to flying to the big beefy guys and you can do pretty much anything you want the next one is the most unique a lot of forever 40k is very humanoid-esque uh, that's where you see the vast majority of your armies um, even a lot of the aliens are very humanoid or human adjacent. And 
sometimes people don't want to play with that. They want to do something really cool. So if you're a fan of the movie Alien and you really think the, the Xenomorph is cool, you want to check out the Tyranids. The Tyranids are bugs with a hive mind and thousands of different varieties because they're hyper adaptable. So a lot of, a lot like the Space Marines have a lot of variety, the Tyranids are one of the other factions up there that has a really good amount. They have nowhere near as much as the Space Marines, but they do bring a lot to the table, whether it be giant monsters or little tiny rippers or hordes of shooting bugs or pretty much anything you can imagine, they exist. Uh, psychic bugs, um, they exist. They're a lot of fun. Um, I own a small army of them. No one in my group actually plays with them right now, but they are a really fun narrative antagonist. So whenever we do narrative campaigns, and I'm, honestly, if I'm running a little dry because I'm the one who kind of GMs those, I send the Tyranids in. <laughs> They're really fun to fight. They're very different and unique compared to everyone else. And it gives a really, really cool game feel. And a lot of Tyranid players tend to be big, big fans of the Tyranids because of all of the cool things you can do. You, It's one of the few factions, along with Space Marines and Eldar, that you can tweak things um, to allow yourself to go up against different opponents. Um, whether you're going up against the chunkier Space Marines or even Chaos Knight, or, um, Knights, you have the ability to deal with them. But you're not overwhelmed with um, the sheer amount of variety that the Space Marines have. And that is the one flaw they have, is a lot of times they have so many options that it's too many options. Um, next, we are going to talk about ease of play. So one of the rules that I kind of used with this is I can't repeat any uh, one faction on any of these five traits or um, reasons for recommending them. So custodies could fall here too. They're pretty straightforward in how they do things. But for ease of play, there's an, another faction that is very good as well. Um, there's, honestly, I put three different factions into this group. Um, one, like I said, is the Custodes. Another one is the World Eaters. I did not include them in this uh, because there's other complications that limit them. Um, but there's some build issues and transportation issues you have to deal with that you don't have to deal with with the Leagues of Votan. This is my second army. Um, it's one that I absolutely love. This does not have a lot of variety to it. There are literally five or six different um, actual things you can play right now. They have added a few more, but there really isn't a lot of variety. But that does make it very easy to play. You don't have a lot of things you have to remember. You don't have a lot of bells and whistles going on in the background. You have a very hunky chunky army that just charges forward with big tanks and big and short dwarves and power suits that beat the living snot out of people when they finally get in range. Uh, they're a lot of fun to play. They are very easy to understand. Um, and they are very new person friendly. Um, I'm sure as time goes on, they are a very new faction. They're the newest faction actually in Warhammer 40 K which is why they don't have a lot of variety. So I'm sure we'll get more down the road. We already have seen a few come out recently, but they are very, very user-friendly to start. And lastly, the I want variety, but not Space Marines. This is actually very common. Um, when you're starting Warhammer 40k on the tabletop, you tend to get two different factions. You get the Ooh, Space Marines are cool. I want to play with them. And the, ugh, Space Marines. We see those guys everywhere, and I want to be different. Um, and I've seen this faction go in several different ways, but 
the easiest, I want variety, but I don't want space marines and bugs aren't in interesting to me category would be the Eldar. The Eldar have a lot of variety as well. Uh, they're one of the factions that's been around the longest. Um, and they do bring a lot to the table. They do have some cool, interesting things they can do. Um, it's a good starter faction for someone who wants to play strategically. Um, honestly, that's probably what I should call this anyways, is the simple, strate or simple strategic play recommendation. We're going to go with that. Um, and that is the Eldar, for sure. They have a lot of cool things they can do, but they're usually pretty straightforward to understand. Uh, they do have some really cool weapons that do some pretty cool things, but there's not layers on layers on layers of rules and almost fine print that you have to re remember. Um, we'll talk about that <laughs> in the next video. There's a couple armies that are very much that way. Um, but, yeah, the Eldar are a great addition, a great starter army or secondary army. Um, it's the army my little brother started with and he absolutely loves uh, because they're both strategic and user-friendly. Uh, they're that kind of hybrid between the Space Marines and the Leagues of Votan that is very much beloved by a lot of people. So, those are the five armies I recommend starting with if you are not hooked on one through the lore. That is the Custodes, the Space Marines, the Tyranids, the Leagues of Otan, and the Eldar. If you guys have any different opinions on what are good ones to start with, oh, and yes, I did not start with, did not include any Chaos in here, because Chaos does have a lot of transportation issues and a lot of spiky bits. It's also why the Drakari are not in here. Um, it makes building them far more complicated and painting them can be a little bit complicated as well. Um, I honestly don't think they're in the other video either. They're good mid-level factions or someone who wants to uh, start a little bit more complicated project or a good, great second army. Um, I have a thousand sons that I'm working on right now that I absolutely love. So if I didn't say your army on here, don't be discouraged. If you started there, that's great. If you love them, that's great. Um, let me know down below what your first army was or which army you're thinking about starting. Uh, if you have any questions about building an army list or how to start, um, also let me know in the comments below. And we've got a lot of pretty experienced players down there too. And I'm sure if I'm not, I can't answer your question, I'm sure one of them can. And I'll see you guys next time.